Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host, the one and only, Ray Flowers. Ryan Howard is already a rich man, but he's about ready to become an awfully rich man. He signed a five-year extension today with the Phillies for $125 million. There's a club option that could take the deal to six years, $138 million. The bottom line is the five years guaranteed at 125 means he's being paid $25 million a year for the length of that contract, which makes him the second highest paid player per season behind only Alex Rodriguez. Quite the claim for a guy who does a great job hitting home runs and knocking in runs, but really is not very good at the other aspects of the game. Now, Ryan Howard's already 30 years old. He was blocked for a couple of seasons with the Phillies because of the Jim Tomey acquisition and, and having him at first base with the big league club. So again, he's already 30 years old. He's got two more years on his current contract before this extension kicks in. What that means is at the end of the contract, the five guaranteed years, Ryan Howard's gonna be 37 years old. That's, that's getting pretty old for a player who's had some questions about his physical makeup. Not always the, the best uh, guy in shape. He's not someone you necessarily want to see in a swimsuit if you're a lady. He's gotten a little bit better with that in, in recent years, but there are concerns about his physique. There are concerns about the fact he still can't hit curveballs. There are concerns about his struggles against left-handed pitching. Ryan Howard, not exactly ideal, even though he's been extremely consistent and the best power bat in baseball from a home run and RBI perspective moving forward. Still, it's a big risk for the Phillies to pay a guy who really struggles on defense and has those other concerns to make him you know, the second highest paid player in the game, especially moving into his mid to late 30s. We'll see how it works out. What the, other, what the signing also does is apparently signals the end of Jason Worst time in Philadelphia at the end of the season. Now, the Phillies can't afford to be paying $20 million to guys like Holiday, Utley, Howard, 10 million plus to guys like Blanton, you know, Jimmy Rollins, and continue to, to put money like that toward Jason Worth as well. Worth will probably stick with the team through this season. I guess there's still a chance the deal will get worked out, but you have to think that this huge deal for Howard probably signals the end of Jason Worth's tenure with the Phillies at the completion of the 2010 season. Ian Kinsler, doing well. He's out on a minor league rehab assignment. Hopefully that'll go as planned and he'll return to the Rangers active roster by the end of this week. Now, He's been a leadoff hitter in the past. He's hit at the top of the order. The plan going into the season and one they're going to continue with now when he does return is to bat Ian Kinsler fifth. Now, that should mean a lot of RBI opportunities. He's already said that his ankle's not 100%. He probably won't be running much, at least early on when he's back anyway. So putting him down that fifth hole is probably a good idea. They still have a really strong lineup if everyone's going well there in Texas. So look for Kinsler to have a great shot to be a middle, order, the middle of the order bat and to produce an awful lot of runs, both scored and in the RBI, RBI production when he's back in the lineup. And again, hopefully that'll start this weekend. Miguel Olivo has been seeing a lot more playing time. Chris Sionetta, who he's been splitting time with early on at catcher position, has really struggled. He's hitting under 150, not giving the club what they want. Olivo, on the other hand, has got home runs in his last three starts. Jim Tracy came out and said, hey, look, whatever one of these catchers is hitting will be the one in the lineup. So Miguel Olivo is probably going to see some more playing time in the short term. Both the guys offer similar skill sets at the dish. We'll have to wait and see. It could be an issue where both guys end up eating into each other's values and making them both NL-only options at best. But if either one of them were given a chance to run with the job, they could hit 250 and pop you 20 long balls. So keep an eye on the situation there in, in Colorado with the Rockies. The Red Sox, they're a total mess. We've got Jacoby Ellsbury, who's still out with his rib issue. He admitted today that he doesn't think he's likely to come back at this point uh, this week because of the issues with the breathing, the pain, etc. Looks like he's probably going to miss at least this week. Hopefully he'll be back by next week, but that's still uncertain at this point. Michael Cameron does have a little bit better news. He's progressing nicely. He should be back fairly quickly from his issues. On the field, guys that have been out there that haven't been hurt, David Ortiz is struggling. Victor Martinez is struggling. They really have a lot of issues. Mike Lowell has stepped up a bit. He's been in the lineup a lot more for the last six days in place of Ortiz. But the Red Sox offense really is struggling at the moment. They need to get all their guys healthy, and they need to get them all going. And until they do, look for some uneven production out of that offense for the Red Sox. Jeff Supon, talk about uneven. He, well, I gotta give the guy some credit. He's been consistent. Unfortunately, it's been consistently awful. The fact that the Brewers were willing to give him a spot in the starting rotation this year, even though he was injured uh, through a lot of the camp, was surprising. He came back, he didn't respond. Big shock there. So the club decided to demote him to the bullpen. The surprise, though, however, is they went with Chris Narvison over Monty Para for that fifth spot. Now, Narvison had a really big spring. Team has really, really liked his arm and what he brings to the table, but he struggled a lot. His area is over seven, his whip's over two here in the early going. Manny Parra, uh, on the other hand, has eight strikeouts and only one walk, keeping his ERA, I think, at zero at this point. Obviously, that's a great thing for Parra because his issue's always been his control. Look for Narvison to get a shot. If he struggles, I would look for Parra and not Supon to get the next shot at that fifth roll in Milwaukee. And then finally, out in the, N the NFC, I almost said, geez, I'm in football mode, NFL West, the Arizona Diamondbacks, 
have had some problems. They've had the issues with Brandon Webb and such. They've had the injury to Connor Jackson. But the guys that are on the field are really producing on the offensive side of the game for the Diamondbacks. You've got Kelly Johnson, who's hitting 322 with seven home runs, batting well over 400 since he's been inserted in the leadoff spot. You've got Chris Young, who's batting in the 290s. He's got 16 RBIs in his 18 games and done a pretty good job of keeping the strikeouts under control. And you've also got Mark Reynolds. Lots of concern about Mark Reynolds being able to repeat what he did last year. Concerns about the batting average especially. He's only hitting in the 250s so far, but of late he's been on fire. He's got four home runs and 13 RBIs in his last six games. He's hitting 420, he's hitting 478, excuse me, in his last 23 at-bats. So Johnson, Young, and Reynolds have really helped keep that team afloat as they struggle to get everyone back out on the dime. Again, I'm Ray Flowers, this is BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me on Around the Horn, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Have a nice day.